Hello. This is the Neil Squire Society presentation on the ABCs of keeping a new job. Congratulations. Well done in finding that job that you wanted so much. You're starting a new job and you may feel like you've just crossed the finish line. This lesson is about keeping that job and building a future in the field of interest you've chosen. Whether you stay with the company that's just hired you, if you have long-term goals that take you elsewhere, you need to plan to be successful. One of the first things to be aware of is attitude and attendance. You need to make sure you can demonstrate your respect by showing up for work on time and allowing yourself enough time to be ready to start work at the assigned time. If you're starting, if your start time is nine o'clock in the morning, that doesn't mean showing up at nine. It means being ready to start work. Make sure you return from your breaks on time. Even if you think nobody notices, you'll be mistaken. Let's talk about being late or calling in sick. If you're unavoidably late, make sure you contact your supervisor and let them know you're in transit and when you will arrive. If you're sick, make sure you contact your supervisor and let them know you're not going to be in. Not calling in constitutes abandonment of your job and that's grounds for dismissal. If you misuse your sick leave or are chronically sick on Mondays or Fridays, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that pattern. I'd like to talk to you about time stealers. I'll bet you'd like a raise this year. But if you've been coming in late or taking extra time on your breaks, you may have been stealing that raise right out of your own pocket. I've got an example here of somebody who's earning $15 an hour. Say you came in late this morning by 10 minutes. That cost your employer $1.50. Not very much, is it? Now times that by five days a week. Now we're looking at $7.50 a week. Well, that's just a few coffees at Starbucks. But if you times that by 50 weeks a year, you're looking at $375 that could have been potentially going towards your raise. Now take an extra five minutes twice a day from your breaks. That equals another $375 for a total of $750 a year, if your employer's still in business. Imagine if there was a staff of 20 doing that. That employer's looking at a $15,000 loss for the year. Let's talk about behaviors. Your behavior should be a good reflection of you. So golden rules to remember are think before you speak, think before you act, use common sense, and be a team player. Good practices include play, paying close attention when you're given an orientation. Ask if there's an employee handbook and any regulations or policies that you should know about. Lack of knowledge is not an excuse on your part. If nobody else mentions it, it's your responsibility to ask. Better to ask the question than look a fool by not asking in the first place is a well-known saying. So there's a lot of new information that will be coming to you in this job. And if you do happen to forget or haven't written down how to do something, make sure you take the time to ask somebody to explain it again two important C's to emphasize are communication and character. It's important that you build everybody else's confidence in you by weighing the facts and acting and taking small steps before you start offering the solution to everything. Work towards creating a positive impression by showing that you can be trusted and make sure you include the other team members and demonstrate your respect for them. The next thing I want to talk to you about is dedication and loyalty. In the workplace, you need to find out who your natural partners will be. You need to understand who the players are and what your responsibility is to them in the workplace. The next topic I'd like to talk about is education. Everyone's mantra should be lifelong learning. Take time to keep your education current while working. 
Many employers will contribute to partial or full payment of education if you're taking an employment-related course. Even if you pay for it yourself, it's all bankable down the road. Another topic to think about is volunteering. Possibilities are volunteering as a board member for a project or an agency that is of significance to your employer or the field you work in. Join associations and organizations that will allow you to meet other people in your industry. Consider cultivating a mentor. You might also want to consider joining an association or volunteer to represent the company at associations like local board of trades, which may offer many opportunities to network and raise your company's profile. And finally, if you don't have one already, consider starting to build a portfolio. Building a professional portfolio where you can profile your past and new accomplishments and how they support your company needs is an important tool when it comes time for that year-end review. Look at value propositions to create interest and increase your visibility and perform research. Consider posting it to your career blog or share it with others on sites such as LinkedIn. Finally, your action plan for success. By applying yourself and having a plan, you'll have much more successful employment experience. As they say, it's all in the details. This concludes our presentation on maintaining employment. If you have any questions, please ask your facilitator. Thank you.